Hi, everybody. I wanted to continue with the Experience Cloud site. I am back into my Trailhead Playground where I started and created a basic Experience Cloud site. And remember, if we go to the setup menu here, which I've already done, it takes you here. I'm always going to type in all sites. Sometimes people just type in digital experiences and you get all of them. But for me, I only need the one. I go to the site I created by clicking all sites. And then I show my experience cloud site I made, which I named Trailhead Playground. I can see it right here. Instead, I could click workspaces. If I want to open that in a new tab, it takes me to the same familiar page that we saw before, but I'm used to just going into the builder. I can just bypass that and we'll go straight to the builder today. It's going to sometimes give you some extra options. And let's remind you, this is my portfolio, which is an experienced cloud site. So you can see it's completely customized. Whereas if I'm over here, it does not look like that, but we will get there. I wanted to familiarize you with some things on the page. In my last video, I showed you that if I scroll, I get these boxes that have names of what I'm working with and we call these components. So each of these components have a name. This is just standard on the screen and I don't have to keep any of them. But on the top left, I wanna show you, this is where all your components are located. Most of the time, you're going to use just a few items in here. And especially if you don't know how to code, which you do not need to know, you're going to use a rich content editor in many, many areas. You might also have a use for the HTML editor and some list views. If you find it overwhelming and you know what you want, you can type it in here. This shows me the rich content editor. This is where you get your components. You're dragging them and dropping them on the page where you want. Now that I have, I could customize it, but we're not gonna do that yet. I'm going to delete that and show you, we have over here, your theme. Your theme is the way your page looks. You can change that. So don't feel like when you pick it, you're stuck with it. So if I go to change theme, I'm gonna have all the options. And also to let you know, say you've created a bunch of customizations on your site and you decide to change the theme, you will not lose your customizations. It might move things and you'd have to rearrange them. One of my favorite themes is Cyprus, the way it looks, but I also like Jepson. I'm going to pick Jepson today and it's going to say, are you sure? And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to activate it. My site's going to look a little different as soon as it activates it. But if I had added content again, I'm not going to lose it. I just like the look of this one. That is over here in themes. This also has a place for you can set brand colors, which we will go into another uh, video. We can set some images. Again, these will all be for another video, the font and some theme settings, which we don't need to worry about right now. You go back here. Here is the page structure. This tells you how your page is set up right now. It shows we have a compact header that is up here. You can see that as you go down the page, it tells you what's on the page. I don't usually use this a lot. I don't have a need for it. And then the other one are your settings. In settings, you have a lot of different options, which I will go into as we move through the experience clock process. One of the things that's really important, if you're doing this for a personal portfolio site, you want it to be available publicly. Sometimes I work with clients that also want it to be available publicly. You have to hit guest users can see and interact this with the site without logging in. But it also tells me I have to give access to the APIs. I'll show you where that is. It tells you right here. It actually gives you the path, the workspaces, administration, and preferences. But right now, that's the only thing I'm going to mark. If I were back into the workspaces and I went into administration, and I go to preferences. What they want me to do is check off this API box. Okay, easy enough. You can save that. The save button is kind of hidden down here. Let's move that out of the way and hit save. Now I'm gonna go back to the builder. We will go into more of these other settings another time, but know that they're all here. Theme, languages, navigation, which will be very important. 
and other advanced settings that we may or may not use. So I'm going to close that. Now, now that I made that change, the only thing that is going to make that change stick or save is to hit the publish button. Publish is the same thing as save. Anytime I hit publish, I'm saving my changes. Usually it takes a few minutes as your site gets more and more content on it. It could take a little bit longer. Some other features while we're waiting for that you want to be aware of is this preview button. It's very important because right now the way I'm looking at this, it's showing all the names of these components and that is not how somebody else would view it. If I want to see it how other people view it, I'm going to hit preview. Notice they're all gone. I can click around. We'll say I go to this page. It's not set up, so nothing's going to happen. But I can just move around. And this is how somebody else would see it. So that's important to know as you start making changes and adding pages, this is how someone sees it. And it's also an easy way to navigate around if you've got a, a bunch of navigation. Instead of trying to use a drop down menu, you can just click on it and move. I will go back to the builder and show you this. This is where all your pages are. You could use this to go to a direct page if you wanted to. If I wanted to go to the login page, which is not set up, but I could do that here. Go back to the home page this way. A couple other things I want to show you is this button right here. This is the view that somebody's going to view it in. Right now, it's in desktop. You always want to see what it looks like in mobile because 90% of people are in mobile, but you can also view it in tablet, although tablet for me never really looks that different. It's just a smaller version. But if I were to change this and go to mobile view, and then I'm just gonna say okay on this, I can see how it looks on mobile. And see, it's very different the way the picture is covering the words. It can give me an idea of things to change to make it more mobile friendly. I'm still seeing these boxes, but if I hit preview, I can also view mobile and preview. Remember when you view in mobile, this is actually just a wire frame, it means it's a basic model. It's gonna look on different on iPhone versus Android, but this gives you an idea of how they're going to see it. If you notice in mobile, we also have a hamburger menu to get to the menus. I'm gonna go back to the builder and then I'm just gonna go back to desktop mode. So this is the basics of where to find things on the page. My next video will get more into it.